Now it's on Ford to show us what they are capable of as for electric vehicles. This is the all new Ford Mustang Mach E, sporty Mustang jeans, exterior styling crossover, interior completely new, driving experience, of course, electric here on Autogefühl in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go! In the front you can see the Mustang jeans, so the sporty styling with the close grille in this case, because it's an EV, but strong accentuations on the hood. Headlamps, standard with adaptive LED, and you can see a very interesting daytime running light signature. The length is at 4 meters 71, 15 foot 5 or 185 inches, and wheels come from 18 to 20 inch, these here are the 19 inch wheels in between, maybe good compromise. Crossover styling here with the black piano lacquer and the red color for today. And here the falling roof line, sporty strong shoulders right there, but indeed a crossover styling, so not SUV, but also nothing too low sitting. Again, something in between, why not? Then the base model start with rear wheel drive only. Already sporty touch, of course, and then you can also get an all-wheel drive model. That means one electric motor in the rear, one electric motor in the front. That's also what we have here. And you can get two different battery sizes, either 68 kilowatt hours net or 88 kilowatt hours net. So that's the real usable size. And you can also combine them in whatever way possible. So you can go rear-wheel drive, small battery, rear-wheel drive, big battery, or all-wheel drive, Small battery and all-wheel drive, big battery, so all is possible. Which one would you go for? Of course, also always a matter of pricing. The range of the big battery, by the way, in good conditions, 450 kilometers plus or 300 miles plus. The smaller battery then with a little bit of less range. And then it depends on, do you floor it out on the motorway? And what's the temperature outside, of course. Here, the rear design with this you know, claw design, vertical, like we know from the old Mustangs as well, really spectacular. And then you can see here this lip that is forming and contrasting black in the lower area. AWD logo then here for the dual motor setup. The top speed, by the way, is 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour. Only if you have the GT model, then you have 200 kilometers per hour or 125 miles per hour. Yeah, and talking about GT model and acceleration figures and so on, the normal rear-wheel drive model starts around 7 seconds in the acceleration figure, the all-wheel drive model around 6 seconds in the acceleration figure, just the GT model then less than 4 seconds, of course, then the quickest one. Recharging, here at the driver's side only, AC 11 kilowatts, DC 115 kilowatt for the small battery or 150 kilowatt for the big battery. You have two seatings available, either you know the whole slick surface or then here the optional is like a premium package optional with perforation that's more breathable then and both are again animal free and high grade leatherette so it really feels super premium very soft the seating position is 
indeed crossover alike. It doesn't feel like a high SUV, but it doesn't feel like a sedan. Indeed, something in between. And again, the cool thing I immediately realized is that the seats are really very soft and plush. Headroom with one with 86 or six with one, still something left. And here, this is the panoramic roof. It is a fixed one. You cannot open it. Interior overview, once again, really cool with the fabric inserts here and the B&O sound system. Then this is more carbon fiber style, so to speak contour stitches and then this vertical huge screen 15.5 inch the instruments here with an easy layout the digital speed then gps information so it's actually simple but straightforward once again and the range of around about 450 kilometers or 280 miles is really good because you know this projection here at minus one degrees celsius so that's freezing point and you know when it's cold the batteries usually have lower range or the vehicles have lower range so it's already a good figure for this temperature so and then here the gps map really responsive and again really clear display i really like that then you have some um, you know like an app view here in the lower area and this is the only physical thing like attached on the screen for the volume and i think that's really good because in some you know situations you just want to turn up and down the volume manually so to speak and i think that's really cool to have that still climate uh, control right here not physical but still at least somewhat easily accessible so that works and seat uh, seat heating and steam reheating is in the lower area this is maybe a little bit complicated to control than here in this lower area in the lower part you have a really lot of space that's really cool also with an inductive charging pad you can also connect Apple CarPlay or Android Auto with, you know, just wirelessly. But you can also use the cable USB-C and USB-A. So both is available. Good solution. Then adaptive cup holders. It's also nice. And also the middle console here is very well executed. Here with the turning, you know, shifting lever here. For the D mode. And uh, then you have here this armrest. Well attached put it up and then this is also a good build quality with a lot of space and 12 volt power supply so overall really liking what i see so far the seat as i would be driving means you can easily house four tall adults in this vehicle maybe five we'll soon find out here still some leg room left you sit relatively high so it will be quite cool for kids as well since we have this fixed panoramic roof, there's also still space above my head. And also the middle seat can be occupied quite well, headroom and legroom wise, just a little bit harder than at the back. But you can also, again, drive it with five tall adults done. And now to the trunk or the boot. Here with a swiping of foot gesture, you can also open this electric hatch. 29 up to 60 cubic feet or 400 liters up to 1,400 liters. If we fold the seats. Square dimensions, very well usable. Then you can fold this one here up and have, for example, space for your charging cables. You can put it here in the rear, but also in the front, of course. And that, not too high the sill. Then you can also reach over here and then fold seats like this. And then you really have a lot of space, so very well usable. And we have a front, five cubic feet or 80 liters. And you can have this split here in the front. That's, of course, a little bit plastic ishy, but yeah, I probably would not go with that, but just have an open area. So let's do the acceleration here in the untamed mode. speed 180 and we directly have a slalom mode here for us steering is redirect but doesn't convey such a good feeling but the suspension is actually quite sporty so it is fun to steer it around missing a little bit of the steering feeling is a little bit you know not connected to the road but definitely a lot of driving fun and super direct the vehicle. And now welcome to the usual Thomas 
Thomas's driving lounge here, electric driving lounge with the Ford Mustang Mach E. And we start on the German motorway right here. What about the noise insulation? We are you know, inching towards 120 kilometers an hour, so yeah, something 70 miles per hour. And noise insulation is not that bad, but also not superb. We've had other EV competitors that are a little bit better as for noise insulation. Here it's comparable to the noise level of the Teslas we've driven. You have this upright seating position, you have a good overview of the road and so on. So indeed, I more and more get rather SUV than a crossover feeling. The steering could have a little bit more feeling for my taste. So it is very direct and sporty, but it doesn't convey the best connection from like driver, car and the road. Um, as for the energy economy, so again, it really depends on the outside temperature and how much you floor it down and so on. Um, but here on our trip so far, when we are at reasonable motorway speeds, we are in a higher 20 kilowatt hours and one kilometer regions. So that's then at the moment like 25 kilowatt hours, one kilometer, something like that. That's then something like 35 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. This would rather come close than to a 400 kilometers of range or 250 miles of range. The suspension we have here is normal steel suspension, but so far it does a good job. It's a good compromise between sportiness and comfort. Only the GT model will get an adaptive suspension, so-called magnet ride or Magni ride, which then adapts to the know to, to the surface a little bit more and also to the driving modes you pick unlimited speed here and we are at 100 kilometers an hour and we can accelerate it out let's go that's 150 kilometers an hour really quick also in the acceleration even though we were already at speed changing the driving modes while driving here you press this vehicle button a little bit distracting to do that while driving definitely but here and then the driving modes, active, whisper, untamed. Let's go to the untamed mode and see if there's any difference. Also sound-wise, there's a little difference. And 150. So the throttle input was a little bit quicker then. And you also heard this electric sound, you know, this sound generator then. I'm in the one pedal driving mode. So when I go off the throttle, we have immediately a strong deceleration. Usually I do not need the brakes at all than the normal brakes. And you can have different steps. You can, when you deactivate this mode and you lift the throttle, you just, you know, you just roll, especially in the, in the normal driving modes. That way the car is rolling. Then you have here this L mode, like a low gear, you know, from combustion engines. Then there's stronger recuperation and even stronger than in the one pedal mode and then when you're in the one pedal driving mode then the L setting also you know you can just ignore it basically although we had high speed we were relatively efficient now we're at 23 kilowatt hours and one kilometers so that's then like 30 something kilowatt hours and 100 miles this brings us back to our projected range of 450 kilometers or 280 miles. If you have the all-wheel drive model like we have here with the two electric motors, you still have a rear wheel bias. So the predominant motor the car is using is the rear motor. And when you really accelerate it out, then also more power from the front electric motor is being demanded. And now to our conclusion for the day with the all-new Ford Mustang Mach-E. Somehow the German pronunciation, like with Mach, sounds somewhat more fitting, right? Doesn't it? Very rare case, usually English sounds better than German. Yeah, and more like, more soft, like does German. <laughs> Just kidding. So, back to our conclusion. Exterior, really striking. Yeah, really sporty design, like it's supposed to be for Mustang. Closed front grille, but doesn't look in your any bad or something crossover styling but when being on the interior it already feels a little bit more suv-ish upright seating position animal free interior really soft super sophisticated seating surface especially here in this premium package so they really did a great job there also a paradigm shift for the ford vehicles 
Also the space you have on the interior is good, new infotainment system. Here and there it could be a little bit better as for the user interface, but comparing to what we had before, even here so much more sophisticated and you can do a lot with that actually. Sporty driving feeling, a lot of fun to drive, no doubt about that. Good acceleration will be even better in the GT model. Of course, we'll keep you up in our channel with that one. The only thing, yeah, this steering feel could be a little bit more connected to the road. It is direct and sporty, yes, but doesn't give you the best connected feeling driver, car and road. That's the thing I would actually improve. Other than that, quite convincing. And the range, as I said, what we found out earlier with something 250 to 300 miles, 400, 450 kilometers, here, of course, low temperatures, they do not have a heat pump. That would be the other technology thing to fix, actually. So the low temperatures can, of course, have an effect on that. Since we had some something in the 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometer energy consumption, that's something in the 30 kilowatt hour on 100 miles consumption. So very interesting vehicle, no doubt. Pricing then, both in Germany and for example also in the US starts below 50,000 euros or dollars and when you put everything in it you still stay below 70,000 euros or dollars so not cheap overall but considering the competition it's actually an interesting offer of course you should compare the competitors we will link the videos in the video description really hope you enjoyed our episode for today Please subscribe to us if you haven't done so far and leave us your comments to the new Ford Mustang Mach-E. See you next time.